So we have something super exciting to show you guys today. A little while ago, Heather and I were off hiking. We didn't bring the camera with us and we stumbled upon a cave system of some kind, a place where clearly somebody had settled down and built a house, maybe stored animals or something. Like it's an entire cave living setup, which is fascinating. Uh, so today is Saturday. We have the kids with us. We're gonna go off and properly explore that cave dwelling. But first we have some work to get done. So, we gotta dust these off yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, so we can get a clear um, picture of what they actually Well, it'll like. never, it'll never look the same. I wanna get them as close as possible. So these existing beams are um, quite new in the last 10 years or so, I forget, five years maybe even. Um, and they were stains, a color that doesn't quite match some of the other wood elements. This right here, once I clean the dust off of it, is just beautiful. It's what caught our eye. I think we've mentioned it several times um, before and just how beautiful the craftsmanship and the color of it was. And I bought a lot of different stains and I would love to see if it's possible to uh, stain these uh, new rafters, new beams to be much closer to this. So I think our plan is to go up to the second story, uh, rip off the floorboards and then basically attempt to stain from the top and try to match the color as close as possible. If we find a color that we really like that matches better, then we're gonna go ahead and restain all of the existing beams. All right, so the idea ah! is to cinch it. Remove the floor. Right. And then we can both see better yeah. And stain from the top down, which is actually quite nice. Perfect. They stain the top. I didn't expect them to. Okay. All right, so I have four different stains. I'm going to try all of them. Probably a mix of uh, a couple different coats. I have Noche Antico and Noche Scuro, uh, which I believe is dark walnut and antique walnut. I think it's going to work. The problem is, is that, I mean, I think everyone knows it would probably be better to sand down the existing stain and start fresh, but I really want to see if it's possible to find some kind of mixture that allows us to just stain over top of the existing stain. Oh, oh great. That's not it. I don't think so, no. No. We'll see how it dries. It looks um, like it's too thick, I think. Um, true. It's almost more of like a... Like a paint. Yeah. It doesn't allow the green to show through very well. We'll see how it dries, but straight away, I think no. That has potential. That, I think that's gonna be really good. So our plan right now is to have the beams be a dark stain that kind of matches as close to underneath the stairs as possible. And then the floorboards that will be like our subfloor upstairs will be painted white. So I think that will give a nice contrast and be kind of a mix between like the modern and the rustic. All right, sorry, lash dish, lash up. Oh no, all right, we gotta go back to Ikea and <laughs> get some more dishcloths. I think that has oh, a lot that's of potential. Oh, that's it. Oh, for sure. So it's still, like some of the orange is still showing through. I wanna see if I wipe this off a little bit. That just seems so much thicker to me. It is, it is too thick, it doesn't show enough through. Because you want the, the look of the wood to shine through. I don't know if you can see. It's still too orange. Oh yeah, you can see the three right here. And so it is a bit orange. We need it to be a bit more brown. It's a lot better though, for sure. I can, I can mix the stains or find something that'll match, but even if we were just using that, which is, that's the scuro, noche scuro, I would be happy with that. 
we should try one where I sand down the existing one and see. Mm. Although I don't even want to try that because the amount of work that would be required on the rest of the house. I know you don't want to, that to be the answer, right? <laughs> we need to find something that is a lot easier than that. to you but no, that looks pretty good don't no <laughs> i refuse to stand all the beams i, I, I refuse <laughs> then why did we try <laughs> um i don't feel like, you need to let it dry first to see yeah. if it's a drastic difference between the two yeah um it's certainly not an, you have more of a texture change than a color change So it's not exactly the same matching that. We'll never match it because it's two different wood species. But I really think just one one coat of, what is this, the Noche Scuro over top of the existing stain makes a dramatic difference. It makes it look a lot better. I made perfume. <laughs> what did you use to make your perfume? I'll show you what I found. No, come here and tell me. I don't want to go. I have to help Daddy work. Okay. So there was this pretty purple flower. Look at the petals of the pretty purple flower. Mm -hmm. And there was this really soft plant that smelled so good. And I put it in yellow flowers. That's about all. <sighs> You're really just going for it now, aren't you? Well, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> it's funny because the the color that looks that you see on camera is quite a bit different than what you see in real life. It's not perfect, but it is much better. So we are extremely blessed to live in an area that is just littered with hiking trails. All of these valleys and leading up into the surrounding mountains are just covered in hundreds of kilometers of hiking trails. Hiking is something that we've been trying to do more and more as our escape and to get in shape because I'm out of breath. Uh, so Heather and I have been trying to have a hiking day once a week. It's been a little inter interrupted the last few weeks from nonstop rain, but today we're trying to ignore the rain. We've chosen to leave our rain jackets at home and we're gonna plow through and get this hike in no matter what happens. One of the reasons that we picked this area is because there's a lot of good hiking around uh, the stone house. We haven't really been able to take advantage of it. I think Brady mentioned like Mondays We've been trying to have a day where we walk around and explore a little bit more. But when you just are in the work, it's easy to forget, like, why are we doing this? Why are we here right now? Like, we can't travel. We can't go back and see our families. Like, we're not living at the stone house. So it's it can be really challenging. But on days like this where we can just go for a walk as a family, enjoy the spring, the nature, everything is just kind of shooting up with life it's just so pretty peaceful and um it's a good reminder of like why we're doing this so occasionally on these trails you do walk by stone terraces other people's oh there's some donkeys so as i was saying occasionally you will walk by these old stone terraces just like we have throughout our property and that's because all of these paths lead to other little homes in the area. And these were all old mule paths. They were the, uh, the roads through the mountains. They were the way that they would have carried their, their produce and supplies and everything to live their lives through the mountains from city to city and from house to house. A lot of the old stone houses in Italy are completely only accessible through hiking, which definitely makes them extra special in my opinion. But because they are not reachable by cars, most of them kind of get 
lost in time. There are just hundreds and thousands of houses if you just go hiking through these trails that you will eventually come upon. They're called baita or stone cabins in the mountains. And the majority of them have just been lost to time. I'm looking for some strawberries and I'm looking for a big cave. Because my stick always knows where to go. Oh, girls, this is it. Wow. Made a house? All right, this is it. Wow. Can we go inside the cave? We can. It used to be someone's home. Not anymore? Yep, no one lives here now. So, this is what we found earlier. We haven't explored it too much, but they took a natural opening in the cave and then took surrounding rocks and built up a facade for the front of the house with a doorway and everything leading inside of the cave system. What does this look like? What does it remind you of? Stone the stone house. The stone house. So it's the same kind of stones. Slate? They use the same, it's the same slate. They use the same process of chiseling it out. It looks the same. And then after they stacked them up in the same way, they put that same lime mortar over top of it. Wow. You can even see down to the little pebbles that they used in the mortar. It's exactly the same. The only difference is, look at how they use the existing cave structure. So all this is, is one wall that kind of has a front of their house with a door, but it's the same construction style. It's just that the cave provided the other three walls naturally. Should we go in and look? Check it out? <laughs> so naturally it is a little creepy coming in here. Oh, wow. Girls, look at this. We won't go No, give it a shot. This is, this is incredible. Just a little room, almost like looks like they might have slept up here. Like I feel like maybe they had a fire down here and would sleep up here because you wouldn't put animals up the stairs, I wouldn't think. I really don't I know. I think they probably lived in this bit because it looks the most like a house and the animals were probably around the corner. Yeah, there's more like behind because there's like... Yeah, we'll go around and explore the other side. So this reminds me so much of the caves in Turkey that we explored in Cappadocia. Oh my goodness. There's just full of caves that people lived in, you know, so, so long ago. This reminds me of that and it's really, really fascinating. Really, really cool. They built this external wall here, but then this is also a wall that was built. It's kind of to block off a room from the rest of the cave and it's kind of just kind of been opened up probably from people just exploring. Oh, that's where the fire was. So this was the fireplace right here. I can hear something back there. Water dripping. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fancy people. So after talking to one of our neighbors who has been out this way before, it seems like this cave system kind of goes pretty deep inside. You can actually have someone take you through a tour, which I would not do by myself because there's some pretty narrow passageways to get through. Not something I'm willing to mess around with right now. Um, but I don't, I really don't know the history. I don't know if they just stored animals here, if they lived here. It seems like it's too built up just for animals. On camera, all of the rocks look green, but it's literally just the reflection of the grass from outside. It's literally just the, the reflection of the sun off the grass, making the caves look green in here. Doesn't it look like staring into a throat with a giant tonsil? Ew, yes. <laughs> Which is currently dripping. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to teach our children to face their fears, not imagine <laughs> more scary things. The mouth of the cave? Yeah. Oh, wow. It's like a, what's in uh, Aladdin. But what's the, you know, the, the cave Diamond guy? The, the cave of wonders. Yeah. Diamond in the rough. Diamond in the rough. Are you the diamond in the rough, Alexa? <laughs> All right, let's go. Who disturbs my slumber? <laughs> This is cool. 
Alexa, do you see the black ceiling? Is that from fire? Yep. Good job remembering. Wow. So there are quite a few other small little caves and you can see that they were used at least for some kind of habitation because the uh, the roofs are charred with the the smoke of the fire. I feel like we're cave explorers. Oh man, this one's a little a little creepy. It just makes me wonder like what's living inside of here. All right, that one, that one freaks me out. I'm not going in that one. Okay, last cave, just because it's really fascinating. This one's fairly small, doesn't go back very far, but look at this tree that's just kind of overcome all the odds and is growing up beautifully along the side of the cave. In this cave, there's still a, a fire pit here. I doubt anybody would mind you coming up here and having a, a picnic and starting a fire and getting out of the rain. This definitely is a pretty, pretty unique spot. I don't know if we're capturing it very well, but it, it goes on just very far up and uh, too, uh, too steep to climb with the kids today. So I think we're gonna call it quits and head back to the stone house. Is it ready to eat or not? I think so. I think it's ready. Hey, can we pick it? <laughs> we picked our first strawberry. Let's wash it. Yeah, so let's actually, wash it. We're gonna try. It looks pretty good. We're gonna wow. try our first. It might be a little sour still. Yeah, but it's just crazy to think that we're gonna try our first, like, a food that we've grown. That's so cool. That's really cool, isn't it? Well, look how good these plants are doing. Yeah, everything look is doing so well. I can't believe we have a strawberry. All right, Alexa, here you go. I'm not gonna eat it yet. I'm gonna wait Chloe. for it. Well, that one's big. Okay, okay. mommy. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. All right, we ready? Mm. 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 We grew a strawberry. It's not the best perfect. ever. But it's perfect. I think it's, it's still a little sour. Like it's, I like them like that. Um, But we did it. We grew some strawberries. High five, Chloe. Mommy, don't we didn't kill them. Can you show me what you're making? Well, I made a bunch of dirt and I stick a bunch of rocks together to make a rock. A rainbow rock. <laughs> So, Heather. Yeah. I have something to show you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's up at the pond. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm nervous. Anytime you say you have something to show me, it's like, it? I'm really nervous. Okay. All right, let's go see it. All right, let's go. I don't want to fall. I have been falling all day. I know, you have to keep a lot of 
So as mentioned, it has been raining nonstop for like two weeks now. And I've noticed some waterfalls popping off in different places where there wasn't a waterfall before. And with all that extra rainwater coming down, the, our, little, our little spring and pond we made is doing quite well. It's a waterfall! We have a waterfall! Whoa! No way! Whoa. Also, look at the color of the water. Oh my gosh! It's very clean! Yeah. I didn't think of this, but this actually is very good. Yeah. So it's not that bad, actually. It's naturally good. So that will fall down, then it fills up this. Yeah. Then will we some, always have like a water? It will always go down, and this will always go out with the leak. Because if the leak's not there, then this will fill up to the whole entire wall. <laughs> like, what's cool is there's so much water running down here, and this was the original river that they built. You could wall that off and fill this all up as well. Have two, uh, we could have a cold tub and a hot tub. I would jump in there. Well, thank you so much for watching and supporting us. The last couple of weeks, we've gotten a lot of comments and even emails, questions of how do we watch your videos in order? Or even strangely, why haven't you made a video in the last three or four months? And unfortunately, that's kind of just the way that YouTube operates. YouTube will only show you what it thinks you want to watch or what it wants you to watch. <laughs> so um, unless you are actively going to our playlist to, to watch, that's the only way to watch in order or to make sure you haven't missed a video. So whether you're watching on your phone or your laptop or even your TV, if you first search for Raising Voyagers, then find our channel, you'll find a playlist that has every single video in the building series, or you can watch from the beginning in our travel experience. But if you select the videos that way through the playlist, then every time you finish a video, or maybe you've already seen one, you just skip through and click next, it'll show the very next video in order. I don't know if that's helpful to anybody, but there's been enough comments that I just wanted to address that. That's just kind of how YouTube works. And as always, thank you so much for watching, for following along on our journey, and we'll see you next week.